بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Welcome to everyone who's watching and listening local and abroad We'll try our best to answer some questions that we didn't get the, uh, the chance to answer last night or during the week So if you have questions, you may ask them now Please choose your name first and last before your question, your city and state, or your initials first and last, town, village, etc. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you very much for complying to our simple basic rules. Hi, Kala Abu Mesa. All right. Once again, we want to say thank you to all of our sponsors. All of those who contribute and donate and support the cause in one way or another. May Allah bless you and reward you. And we say um, that those who wish to participate in supporting, donating, and sponsoring, you can do so as well, as is listed in the description. Also, we provide a full line of Islamic services virtually and in person. And for those who wish to sign up for those services, you can uh, find out how to in the description of the video as well with regards to our websites, uh, hadithdisciple.com, hadithdisciple.shop.com, our eBay store uh, for Mufti, exclusive tea and tea products. Bi'idnillahi ta'ala. Wallahu ta'ala alam. So before we get started with the questions, we'll take a faida or two from the way of the disciple, bi'idnillahi ta'ala. All right. So on page 19, we speak on real teachers. Real teachers, meaning is that there are people who present knowledge who aren't necessarily what we would consider real teachers. It says, in reality, your teacher shouldn't teach you anything. Instead, he should direct and instruct, guide and inspire. He should instill confidence and drive in the mind of his pupil. The most important job of the teacher is to place log after log into the furnace of passion for seeking knowledge and the spark of aspiration that must eventually lead to a great blaze. If not, the master has truly failed. Furthermore, a failed apprentice means a foolish master. Placing the learner on the path is far more everlasting than the act of merely handing him pieces of information and facts. Developing the mind and personality of the learner, teaching the develop his her own way and style is more impactful avoid producing a clone but that excerpt shows us that from the way of the disciple our school of thought our philosophy our mindset with regards to how to seek in is that someone who's your teacher or your ustad or your sheikh he can give you information and he should but in reality, deep down inside, to the bone, he shouldn't teach you anything. But instead, he should feed you desire and drive. He should show you what you can be by Allah's permission. He should give you the general guidelines, the instruction, and how to go out and get it and do it by yourself for yourself. And how to create and develop your own. And that is everlasting. That's more everlasting than just giving you A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. And the concept of a, someone allowing you to research, teaching you how to research, someone allowing you to think and teaching you how to think, instead of just producing someone that you spoon feed for the rest of his life and they walk around passing on exactly what you gave them, a carbon copy. All right? So that's food for thought with regards to the way of the disciple and what a real teacher is versus someone who isn't necessarily a real teacher. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing us best. That's the most I can explain right now. Um, that's a long concept by itself. The first question is coming from London, UK. Initials KS. Is it wrong to try to finish? And we'll try to answer the questions as briefly as possible. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can in this session without any long, extensive, dramatic answers by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
KS from London UK, is it wrong to try to finish the whole Quran, Ramadan, and Taraweeh, Tahajjud? It's not necessarily wrong. It's okay. What's important is, is that if you choose to pray during those nights in Ramadan, you read whatever you can from the Quran. If you have the ability to finish the entire Quran, starting from Fatiha to Nas, Alhamdulillah, you do so. And if not, you recite what you know. You recite what you can. Whether it's Al-Ikhlas, Al-Baqarah, Jews 27, Surah Al-Kaf, Maryam, Taha, etc. You, you recite what you can, what you have the ability to recite. Wallahu ta'ala alam. There's nothing wrong with having the intention of finishing the Quran during the month of Ramadan, whilst praying, and Taraweeh, and Tahajjud, etc. That's fine. Wallahu alam. And wa Ali from London. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan. Any tips on being Islamic professional with people as in stopping them from wasting your time? Admonish them about the importance of time. Tell them about some responsibilities that you have to perform, which are Islamic. You don't have to be harsh or mean or nasty. All right? Wallahu alam. Or involve them in the, your Islamic time. And oftentimes, you can weed out people who are time wasters. You say, well, I have to sit down and read Sayyid Bukhari right now. I would love to chat with you and drink coffee. That person doesn't read Sayyid Bukhari. They're not interested in reading Sayyid Bukhari, so they'll get up and they'll go away. Wallahu ta'ala alam. MS from Dallas, Texas. Is it permissible to talk to oneself in private? Depends on what you mean by talking to yourself. Reminding yourself of something, bringing yourself to some type of consciousness versus a person actually talking, talking to himself all of the time like some type of mental disturbance. Wallahu alam. AA from the Bronx. Which Nisab level should we use, gold or silver? Use the Nisab level which is best for the poor. Use the Nisab level of gold or silver which is easiest for you to calculate and to accurately gauge. And oftentimes that's gold. Wallahu ta'ala alam. AA or uh, NTA from the Bronx. What to do if pains due to tashahud position foot is not flexible to bend? You make the tashahud according to your ability. All of the different positions and the specifics of the positions, all of them are not mandatory in the prayer. Many of them, if not most of them, are recommended acts of the prayer, as we have explained and demonstrated. Wallahu alam. A.S. from London, UK. Ustad, what should we do if an older uncle in the masjid is looking at you and making you feel uncomfortable? Smile. Give him salams. Bring him a cup of water and tea. Make dua for him. Say a kind word to him. And then ignore him. A.A. London, UK. Are you allowed to cut off communication with people who are detrimental to your deen? We explained that the other night, if I'm not mistaken. Wallahu A.M. from London, UK. If a person believes that they are a hypocrite, how do they stop being one? What is the cure? Fearing hypocrisy is a sign of belief. A person feeling that he's a hypocrite, scorning his deeds, looking at what he knows and what he should be doing is a good sign. As far as wiswas, then that's a different story. Thinking that you aren't a Muslim anymore, you're a munafiq, big munafiq, and you know, like munafiq, munafiq. That's what's west. That's a different story. Seek Allah's refuge, seek Allah's protection, and try to cure that what's west. Hey, yes, I'm London, UK. When a person is praying alone, how much space do we have to give them when walking in front of them? Can you walk beyond the point of their sajda? You give them the space of the estimated sunnah distance between them and a the sutra. The, the space. If they're making sujood, then the place between their head and the sutra, an estimation. And if they're standing up, then the place between their feet and the sutra, if a sutra was in front of them, in estimation. Wallahu ta'ala alam. And if you can place something in front of them yourself, you do so. AA from the Bronx. What time does your class start in your mosque on Wednesday? Well, it normally starts after Salat al-Maghrib. But obviously the seasons are changing rapidly. So, Salat al-Isha. This coming week, the class will be on Thursday and not Wednesday. And hopefully, by the night, Allah, the following week, it will go back to Wednesday. Jazakallah khairan. MM. Over Jisul in the Netherlands. Or over Yisul. I'm not sure if it was pronounced with a Y or a J. Uh, if I, for example, sign a contract where there are, are late penalty fees, but I know that for sure I'm going to pay it on time, am I sinful for still signing the contract? 
ta'ala, if you feel confident that you're going to pay on time and it's a need or a necessity or a major benefit, you sign the contract. As far as is it lawful to pay a late fee or is it lawful to charge a late fee, that's a discussion. And also, is it lawful for a Muslim to make an agreement to something haram even though he feels more than safe of not falling into that haram stipulation? That's a different, that's a discussion as well. AA from London, UK, is making hijra wajib. It depends on the person, on the situation. Um, the scholars of Islam have different discussions regarding the rules of hijra. What's important is sometimes hijra is mandatory, no doubt about it. And other times it may not necessarily be mandatory, but it may be best. Wallo alam. AK from St. Louis, Missouri. Salam alaikum mufti. Do you have any book suggestions in English for those hoping to learn about the rules regarding inheritance? Shazakallah khairan. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would advise you to go back to, um, I think it's a three part lecture series I did on inheritance in English. And if I'm not mistaken, we mentioned many books and titles in Arabic and in English. And you can find it on Hadith Disciple. Shop.com. Jazakallah khairan. SM, UK. It's not a Muslim country. Makes a peace treaty with a defeated Muslim country that the Muslim nation will not have any army for 100 years. Is this treaty valid? It depends. There are things which are impermissible, which may be a means of necessity. You have no choice. But I would say this. If you've learned anything from history, is that when victorious nations uh, grossly and recklessly irresponsibly impose their will and flex their muscle and use a heavy hand on the defeated nations, in most cases it's going to turn around with another big major confrontation, if not a war. So look at the Great War, World War I. The victors defeated uh, uh, Germany, okay, uh, Austria, uh, Turkey, uh, and the other countries that were on the axis then. Okay, the Treaty of Versailles, those harsh, harsh penalties that they placed upon Germany. In reality, it was nothing more than a, a go button for Germany to rearm, break, this, break the agreement, break the Treaty of Versailles, put their army, their navy, their military, their air force, their U-boats, and wreak havoc on the Allies, let alone seek revenge. Okay, so oftentimes many people, they impose things on, on a defeated enemy, which is going to lead to great scorn and resentment, which is going to in turn lead to another big major war. So telling someone or making someone stay away from having any armed forces for a hundred years, for a century, that's, I would never agree to anything like that. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. This is Ta Bang from Dimbaza, South Africa. I'll be turning 31 this month. I'm afraid of getting married. What can I do to overcome this fear? Well, bin Allah ta'ala, what I would do is ask Allah to remove your fear. Ask Allah to give you sakina, to give you peace of mind, of soul, of body, of heart. Right? And I would stay in the company of the brave and the courageous. Allah ta'ala. O.S. Matthews, North Carolina. Assalamu alaikum. If me and the imam are traveling together, and when it was Dhuhr time, I had the intention to pray four rakah, but the imam prayed two, qasr. So I did salam with the imam. You're traveling with the imam, you make this the qasr with the imam. Even if you have a different, if you had a different intention, the imam only made two, khalas. That's sufficient. Wallahu ta'ala alam. So basically, I didn't know I was going to do qasr, like I just explained. Anwar Ali. In London, should one disregard safety and lack of sustenance if he is fond of a place and really wants to study there, such as Yemen, for example? Thanks for inspiring. Put your trust in the long go. The different levels of tawakkul, the different levels of trust and preparation and patience. People have different levels. Some, some person calls it reckless. Another person calls it irresponsible. Another person calls it brave or courage or tawakkul. That, that depends on you. If you feel like you can do it and you can make it, then... You go. You go, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. No one can. And Allah surely knows best. SM from UK. Next question. MHG, Queens, New York. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Hope it is well. Kayf and Nafamu hadith maqtur that say we were commanded to do such and such and such and such. Hayak Allah. Allah yuhayik, barakallah fiqh. Hadith maqtu' an tabi'i 
ولا المنخوف عن الصحابي المهم when you study مصطلح الحديث you find the ulama of Islam differing on the issue of أمرنا بكذا من السنة كذا كنا نؤمر بكذا كنا ننهى عن كذا okay we used to be commanded with this we used to be ordered with this from the sunnah is that كانوا كذا مضت السنة كذا كانوا يقولون كذا كنا نقول كذا Right? We were ordered, we used to say this, the sunnah proceeded like that. The ulama of Islam, they differ on that. Hallahu hukm al Is that technically attributed to the Prophet ﷺ? Is the Prophet the Amir and the Nahi? Hmm? And if a tabi'i says that, does it now get the hukm al going back to the Sahabi? It depends on the age and the time and the generation of the Sahabi and of the tabi'i. Subhanallah. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Next question. Ibn Victor, huh? Hayakallah. SM, UK. MH, AK, St. Louis. Story. Assalamu alaikum Mufti. What advice would you give someone who tends to be introverted on how to build relationships? Take your time. Go slow. Piece by piece. Be in the light to Allah. You don't have to be a social butterfly. Walk at your pace, at your speed, inshallah. If you're naturally an introvert, make the best out of it. As long as you don't go against the Sharia, you have to go to Jumu'ah. Wahakada. You have to go here. You have to do pray to Eid. You have to do Kedah. And you don't allow yourself to be picked off by Shaitan when you're. Seclusion on when you're by yourself or with a few people. Get the point? Wallahu alam. AK St. Louis means uh, HA from London. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Can you wear underwear in a haram? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. So you should avoid that. Underwear is normal clothing. Makhit. Sunni ala udr. Right? Formed on a, a limb or an organ or bone. Shouldn't be done. Wallahu alam. Let's see what we got on Instagram. Thanks a lot, guys, on Instagram for joining. King Manolo, it's been a while since I've seen you. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. SD, Paling Bang, Indonesia. What is the proof of best position for Jama'ah behind the Imam? What do you mean? Jama'ah being obligatory? Prayer? Salatul Jama'ah behind the Imam, is that what you mean? <laughs> Yahya, Philly. Yahya Abu Nusayba. Someone told me you support joining the U.S. Army. I didn't believe him until I asked you about a Khalafiq. Well, Fiqh about a Well, I'm sure people tell you a lot. I'm sure they say a lot about me. It's not the first time or the last time. That I support a Muslim joining the U.S. Army. If you believe that, then it's not going to say to you. And if you don't believe that and you think that I said something else or it was misconstrued or it was a detail, etc., then hopefully that's what you believe. Inshallah, I'll leave the answer to yourself. Well, Alam. Seattle, Washington, no Okay, is it clear, inshallah, hopefully? Okay, all right. Jazakallah khairan. All right. Oh, from Birmingham, UK. Should you recall past your should you recall your past sins always or is it okay to constantly say I stuff with Allah when walking, driving, sitting? Would that be sufficient for repentance? May Allah bless you. 
what are the prophetic supplications that you should make for all sins? Sins that you know about, sins that you don't know about, sins that you've forgotten about, sins that are big, sins that are small, etc. There are prophetic supplications for that. And that's why we always recommend and advise the people to make the prophetic supplications. The quickest way between two points is a straight line. Wallahu alam. VT from the Bronx, New York. Is it a bit odd to say, mashallah, Allah, humabarak, every time we compliment someone with the intention of avoiding giving someone the evil eye? No, I wouldn't say that's a bit odd. Do you have to just say that? Can you not say other words? La quwwata illa billah, mashallah alayk, Allah, humabarak alayk, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, subhanallah, mashallah, things like this. Mention Allah's name. That's khayran. Wallahu alam. HBA, Coventry, UK. How do you respond to non-Muslims regarding the recent incident with Rushdi? Once again, we don't get into names and asking about names and personalities and individuals. What's important is, I believe he got stabbed in the neck or something like that. He's in a coma or ICU, something like that, intensive care. What, what do you want to say? People get stabbed all the time in the UK, right? In America, people get shot. What do you want to say? He got stabbed. It was his destiny. It was meant for him to get shanked in the neck. What do you want to say? Y.E. from London, UK. If someone has surgery and has sutures made from Caligan and other stuff from animals not slaughtered according to the Sharia, are the sutures impure? And if so, how can I purify? If you're allowed to the best of your ability, you may be in a difficult situation of medical necessity or medical need. AM from Schenectady, New York. Is it allowed to talk in a live chat on Juma? That should be avoided. Stay away from that. SD from Panambang, Indonesia. What is the proof of the... Juma, I don't understand the question. DR from Dubai, UAE. Who are the people that can intercede for others on the Day of Judgment? Can an average Muslim intercede for a loved one? In general, yes. If and when Allah allows them to and honors them to make the shifa'ah. And Allah will only allow, will only honor the people that He's pleased with. What are the Allahu? All right, that Allah is pleased with them. He's pleased with what they say, what they believe in, and their deeds. And that can be a prophet, a messenger, a martyr, a nabi, someone salih. That can be a child. That can be uh, someone who died young, etc. Wallahu ta'ala alam. S M Melbourne, Australia. Assalamu alaikum, Mufti. If a restaurant cooks pizzas. And one oven at the same time where on one tray with it within is halal pizza and the other tray containing pizza that has pork in it. Will this lead to contamination and deem it as not halal? I come said I'm to the cattle. It's possible. Cross contamination. Contamination can happen easily, simply. In and out of a pizza oven, easily, with a hand, a knife, a tray. A cutter, a slicer, it's very simple in a kitchen, especially a business kitchen. Moving, touching, sweating is easy. Does that mean that it's not halal because there's some type of contamination? Maybe, maybe not. What's important is um, the modern food industry is a big problem with regards to halal, zabiha, zabiha, kosher, kosher glot, uh, the fraud in the halal business. And FYI, I was just telling a brother last night about a documentary that I was watching on YouTube from Australia about the halal industry and the great abundant amount of fraud that is found in the halal food industry. Or a person has a halal pizza parlor, pizza place, and the cheese that they have, they have halal pepperoni, halal sausage, halal buffalo chicken, but the cheese has enzymes in it, which have enzymes in it, the bread has stuff in it that's come from Khabith matter, the tomato sauce, what heck of that? So that's a long discussion with regards to that. Try your best to avoid that if you can. And if not, you're traveling, you have nothing to eat, you're trying to avoid the chicken, that's not halal, you're trying to avoid the beef, and the only thing you have is a slice of cheese pizza, what can you do when you're on the road, when you're traveling, and you're trying to avoid the other things, right? Well, I'll tell you. E.M. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Sheikh. Can you advise if a layman Muslim should advise a non-Muslim who's reading the Quran translation from a known Shia to learn about Islam? 
Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi I would try to get them a better translation, a cleaner translation, unless the Shiite translation is strictly professional. For argument's sake. Let's say that the Shiite person, Muslim or whatever, non-Muslim, they translated the Quran accurately with no Shiite agenda. That's one thing. But if there's some type of Shiite agenda in it, mistranslation, misinterpretation, then of course you advise that non-Muslim to read a better uh, rendering of it into English. And Allah surely knows best. SH from Queens, USA. Salaamu Alaikum. I live with my family. One of my family members will celebrate their birthday. How do I avoid celebrating without upsetting my family members? Tell them how you feel. Be honest. Be upfront. That's it. Say, you know, I love you to death. I love you to bits. You're my family member, my mom, my sister, but I don't celebrate birthdays. I don't feel comfortable with it or it's against my religion or whatever the case may be. Just be honest. Be brutally honest with a, in a gentle way. Well, all of them. Hey, hey, turn on Canada. Shake. Does one have to obey their father who always tells him to cut his hair because he just hates long hair? Obey your father in everything which is not haram. K.A. Manchester, UK is reading the Surah Al-Mulk and Sajda every night before sleep. Authentic. Jazakallah khairan. Difference of opinion among the scholars of Hadith. With regards to that, some say Ba'if and some say Hassan. Wallahu alam. What's important is don't go to sleep before you read something from the Quran and Kareem. Whatever it may be. Yasin, Mulk, Baqara, Fatiha, the Quls, okay, Surah Al-Nahl, right, Shu'ara. Read something from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you sleep. Especially the specific, authentic Quranic supplications. The last ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, right? Wahakada, ayat al kursi. Wahakada, ma'am. Wallahu ta'ala alam. AM from Schenectady, New York. To say Juma Mubarak, is that an innovation? I wouldn't necessarily say that if you say it from time to time and you don't believe that it is obligatory or something that is specifically mentioned in authentic hadiths. Islamic culture, there's no foul meaning behind it. You're not making up an act of ibadah. It's something that you say when you greet someone like, hey, hayak Allah, kaifa haluka, how are you doing? It's happy Juma, etc. But it shouldn't be done into and it shouldn't be made into a formal thing all the time, every single time. Shouldn't be. Wallahu alam. A in Boston, Massachusetts. Is a gender reveal for baby halal? Not a party, but sending stuff to parents with baby gender colors. Inshallah khairan. Hopefully there's nothing wrong with that. Bi ibnillahi ta'ala. Wallahu alam. SD Pan and Bang Indonesia. What is the proof? Please. Explain your question, Jazakallah Khairan. AK, Cairo, Egypt. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. What is the connection between fatwas about black hairstyle, i.e., braids, locks, etc., and the colonization and reshaping of the modern world? Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May Allah bless you in the lands of Egypt. I think the answer to your question is found in your question. Pretty clearly. Obviously, not to get on uh, or not to go off track, but we'll say the truth according to what we believe and all knows best. There lies no doubt. Culture, science, technology, race, tribe, clan, caste, all of these things have an effect upon the human being. And from the, or from a, a, an item, a mufti is a human being. So a mufti could have conceptions and perceptions and thoughts and feelings and ideas from outside. That's a fact. And a major part of, of a fatwa is one's culture and one's surroundings. That's a fact. This hairstyle is haram, so on and so forth. This hairstyle is okay. It's a fact. This can't be denied. And this is why, like Ibn Hazm rahimahullah ta'ala said, وَلَا حُجَّةَ إِلَّا فِي مَا جَاءَ بِهِ النَّبِيِّ That's what the proof is. Kitab and sunnah. Kitab and Sunnah is the absolute proof. Wallahu alam. Khayr, and we'll stop here today, guys. Jazakallah khayr. That's all the time that we have. Thanks a lot for joining, for watching, for signing up. May Allah, Allah Azza wa Jalla bless each and every one of you. 
and hopefully in our next classes we'll have the ability to um give you more time answer more questions give you more benefit well a lot of them please don't forget inshallah ta'ala about um our latest publication the weight of the disciple the first authentic study manual on seeking knowledge for the western reader ta'ala, available now online the in-person book release will be announced soon enough inshallah ta'ala also um all of our different lectures and workshops that we do you can find them on hadithdiscipleshop.com and please look out with the night title for our upcoming class, uh, by law's permission, on history, uh, disciple style, to be announced soon enough. And thanks again for everyone who uh, contributed, who donated, and supported, and everyone who showed love and support in one way or another. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.